the oculomotor nerve. So before going into the pathway and anatomical course, if, uh, of course, we will see a little information of what kind of uh, or what type of nerve it is. It is a general somatic efferent nerve as well as a general visceral efferent nerve. So remember, general somatic and general visceral. Okay, now there are uh, the nucleus which you need to remember in case of an ocular motor nerve. And the name of the nucleus are the nucleus of ocular motor nerve, nucleus of ocular motor nerve, as well as accessory nuclei of ocular motor nerve, that is Edinger Westphal. This is important. This was asked many times. Edinger Westphal. Okay, the so general somatic efferent one is the nucleus of ocular motor nerve and the general visceral effer efferent are accessory nuclear focal motor nerve, otherwise termed to be Edinger Westphal okay, nucleus. So the field of innovation, we have a motor, purely motor. Now remember, all the extraocular muscles except for the lateral rectus and superior oblique. Then ciliary muscle, then we have center pupillae muscles. All these are innervated. Except for the lateral rectus and the superior oblique, all the other extraocular muscles are innervated by oc oculomotor nerve. And then we have ciliary muscles, sphincter, uh, ciliary muscles, sphincter pupillae muscles. Okay, now <clears throat> talking about the extraocular muscles, we'll see in detail here now. The first one we have is superior rectus. What does oculomotor nerve do to this particular muscle? It elevates the eyeball. Remember, it elevates the eyeball. This is important. These are the functions. Please note it down, very important ones. Second one, we have a levator palpebrae superiorsis. These raises the raises the upper eyelid. Upper eyelid. Again important. Levator palpebrae superioris, they raise the upper eyelid. Okay. Now we have few inferior branches also. That is inferior rectus. Okay. This depresses the eyeball. This depresses the eyeball. When superior rectus elevates the eyeball, we have inferior rectus that depresses the eyeball. Then we have medial rectus. They adduct the eyeball. They adduct the eyeball. And then we have an inferior oblique. Important one. They, sorry, they elevate, they ab, abduct, and they laterally rotate the eyeball. Once again, I'll repeat the functions of all uh, ocular motor nerve. Through the muscle superior rectus muscle, they elevate the eyeball. We have elevated palpebrae superioris. They raises the upper eyelid. Then we have inferior rectus. They depress the eyeball. Medial rect uh, rectus muscle. They adduct the eyeballs. Inferior oblique muscle. They elevate. They abduct and laterally rotate the eyeballs. So this is something which you need to remember. Okay, one more we have already mentioned. That is a sphincter. We have sphincter pupillae. How does this act? It constricts, remember, it constricts the it constricts the pupil. And with the constriction, what happens? They reduce the amount of light entering the eye. And then we have also we have ciliary muscles. They contract. Remember, these contract. And thus causes the lens to become more spherical and thus more adapted to short range vision. Okay, adapted to short range vision. And constriction of pupil <coughs> reduces the amount of light entering the eye. So these are the functions of oculomotor nerve. Okay, now 
Let's see a little about the anatomical course of oculomotor nerve. Now, the first one, oculomotor nerve originates from the oculomotor, or remember oculomotor nucleus. And where it is located? It is located in the midbrain. It is located in the midbrain of the brainstem. Okay, now, from here, this oculomotor nerve, I'll write over here nerve. This oculomotor nerve, it pierces, remember, it pierces the dura matter. First one, it pierces the dura matter and enters the lateral aspect of the cavernous sinus. Cavernous sinus. These are the landmarks, remember. Of oculomotor nerve, it pierces the dura matter and enters the lateral aspect of the cavernous sinus. Now, within this cavernous sinus, so right in the brackets, within the cavernous sinus, it receives the sympathetic branches from the internal carotid plexus. So these fibers do not combine with the oculomotor nerve. They merely travel within its sheet. Okay. It travels within the sheath of the oculomotor nerve. They do not form a part of oculomotor nerve. Now then, after this, they leave the cranial cavity. Via superior orbital fissure. Now at that particular point, it divides into the nerve. Nerve divides into superior and inferior branch. Okay. Now, superior branch, they provide motor innovation to superior rectus and the levator palpebrae superioris. And the inferior, they provide motor innovation to inferior rectus. We have medial rectus and inferior oblique. Okay. Apart from these two, it also provides motor innovation to the sphincter pupillae as well as the ciliary muscles. We have discussed the functions of all these muscles already. So once again, anatomical course I repeat. The oculomotor nerve is originated from the oculomotor nucleus, which is situated in the or located in the midbrain of the brainstem. Okay, now this oculomotor nerve it pierces the dura mater and enters the lateral aspect of the cavernous sinus. Now, within the cavernous sinus, it receives the sympathetic branch from the internal carotid plexus. These fibers do not actually go along uh, combine with that of the nerve, but they merely travel within its sheet. Next one. The nerve then leaves the cranial cavity via the superior or orbital fissure. Now, this is a place or at this point, it divides into a superior and an inferior branch. So talking about the superior branch, it provides motor innovation to the superior rectus as well as the levator palpebrae superioris. Okay. Next one over here, we have the inferior branch. It provides motor innovation to the inferior rectus, medial rectus, and inferior oblique. And also, it supplies to the, that to these are the parasympathetic fibers. They <clears throat> supply to the ciliary ganglion. Okay. And now, those ciliary ganglion, they innovate the sphincter pupillae as well as the ciliary muscles. So this is just about the oculomotor nerves. I hope you have understood.